Hello everyone, this is a second part of my tutorial on the screw jack. This time we're going to be making this lovely screw jack spindle which will fit inside the screw jack body and then we'll be offsetting by having a screw jack washer which we'll do at a later date. So let's get started on how to make this screw jack spindle. Okay, so we've opened up our feature in 360 and we now have our page which we can draw. So the first thing we're going to do is just save our file so it can automatically update as we go through. Save wherever you're happy, Hit save. And what we're going to do is then start by drawing different um, elements. And this time we're going to be using the additive way of drawing rather than using the revolve like we did for the screw jack body. So, it's just a quick shot of our um, spindle. And again, I'll put the link for this in the description so you can download it. Essentially, we have a part which is 105 long. 25 is the external radius, which is here to here, as indicated up here. Another nail feature. Nice big coned radius on the front. A couple of chamfers, threaded bar, and a hole, um, which has been reamed flat in the back. So it's a nice straightforward um, kind of way to design something. Okay, so what we're going to do is draw on the front. Just start my sketch. I'm just going to start off by drawing the 25 millimeter circle, which will essentially hold the, the outer profile. Extrude that. It's 20 mil in length. Like so. We're going to take round. And this has actually got two chamfers on. So we're going to go ahead and put the chamfers on. Here aside, so about five millimeters. There's only two on this one, like so. Next, we're going to come around to the back of our object, and now we're going to draw the next section. So this section is actually an eight, eight mil um, kind of groove that we actually part or we we, we machine out. So it's, it's eight mil in diameter, and it's five mil in length. Like so, and on that one, we're going to right click again, create a new sketch. We have our M12 thread. So, like last time, I'm just actually going to draw the profile first and then put the thread on afterwards rather than cutting it away. So, remember, on the extrude tool here, because you've got two profiles, you have an outer profile which is can select it. If you extrude that, you leave a, an internal hole. So, make sure you actually select the second hole so you get one big disc, like so. Just to recap, this is actually 70 mil from the back of our chamfer. It's obviously 65 millimeters in length because we have to minus off the 5 mil that we put on. Okay, so now we have this element of our um, product. Uh, next thing we do is going to thread it so we don't forget. So coming down to thread, okay, external or internal, doesn't matter. Click on the profile, it should recognize it's a 12. I'm going to choose a 12 by at 1.75 coarse thread. Click the OK button there. Next we're going to use put our hole on. So we put our hole on the back feature. So I'm just going to spin it around so I can select the face like so. And come onto the back and zoom in nicely. First reference, because I've drawn this on the middle of the datum, I can choose the snap point in the center. Like so. So this is going to distance. It's six mil and it's twenty mil in depth, and it's just because it's a simple hole that's been going to be reamed. It's going to have a flat bottom as well, not a point like a normal um, kind of drill tip. So it'd be reamed out flat. So let's sort of just spin it around a little bit. You can see now we have our internal hole. You guys might actually also be getting this sort of view. I've actually turned my visual style off, which is down in the display options. You probably may have something that looks a bit more like this. You can see the internal structure, but because it's got an internal structure, sometimes it can, can be a bit more confusing. So I just have a shaded with visible edges only. It just makes my drawing a lot easier. So far, that's basically all our spindle, apart from this front cone section here. Now, modeling that directly off the front plane will be quite difficult. So the easiest way to sort of do this is actually if we do what we did last time on the body, is we actually revolve it around a feature. So I'm just going to draw on my right plane, like so. 
I'm just going to draw out a line from the center point. Okay, don't worry about dimension in this um, because it essentially it's 105 mil from the back edge. Not too far off, 105. So then shorten down that section because all this section here is fixed. So then we have a radius. So we have a radius here, which is R3. So we know that essentially the center point of our circle is 3 mil back. So I'm just going to come and create a point. Stick it on my drawing. Okay. Measure that from point to point. Two and a half. So that needs to be 3 millimeters. Now I can put my circle diameter on here, which is going to be 6 mil in length. Next, what I can do is I can pick up using the line tool or L on, as a keypad short pad. And I can pick up the edge of my chamfer here and I can run down then to my circle. What I'm going to do is actually zoom in because there's a couple of points I can hit. I can hit the top quadrant up here. I could hit the bottom quadrant or the 270 degree quadrant down here. Also, what I should be able to do is come in as a tangent. So you can see there is a cross, which just means I'm going to hit on the uh, edge as I come down. There's a, there's a tangent function just there. That's why I want to click, and it gives me that symbol there, tangent. So it's obviously the line is, is right on the edge of our circle, which is what we want. Last thing to do, close off the shape. Like so. Trim out the rest of the circle. Like that. So then we can come into solid, revolve. Choose our axis, because we've already picked up our profile. The bottom line. Make sure it's a join, 360 degrees, one direction. And then we have our nice cone feature on the end of our chamfer. Okay, so last time I actually put the put the revolve on. Um, I actually use a revolve and a circular pattern to create the the knurl. This time, it's um, I'm I'm not going to do that. I'm going to show you how to do it um, as a secondary feature rather than a primary feature. So that's my drawing complete. So I'm just going to save that. Okay, now I'm going to come into the drawing feature here. Take my drawing free. This will load a lot quicker than what it did last time because I'm not having to bring lots and lots of data in. Okay, so it's now loaded in. So I'm just going to choose the front like last time. Populate that one on. Come up to my projection view. Bring the projection off. Obviously, I don't need to do a top view here because it's essentially the same as the side. I could actually make it bigger if, if, I, if I wanted to. So I'm actually going to come back in. And change our sketch to twice, twice as big. Again, I'm going to do what I did last time. Just remove the internal edges. Um, if you didn't want to have all these features, but it's important because you need to sort of know what's going on. Close that off. Move that slightly over. Like so. Okay, so once you've loaded that in, then it's just to dimension up the object and then we'll be ready re ready to go. So put on our features like, like on the drawing last time. You could actually want to come in and put on the edge like so. Just make sure you identify it nice and clearly. And then we have a feature. What then you could also do now is just include a little sketch, open up the sketch profile, draw a small circle, like so. 
Okay. You can come in your circle. Just draw a couple of lines. essentially is the hatch symbol like so now we're just going to delete the circles we have our hatch finish the sketch now we add that as our no as our hatch there last thing i could do i could actually just project another view if i wanted to so i could actually just project this view again out the back just so i could see a feature rather than having lots of sort of holes um around and i can sort of jig this to sort of suit whatever need that i have and there we have it so that's just a quick overview on how to do the spindle next we'll look at how we do the, the nut followed by then how to assemble everything together thanks for watching